Hey, good morning, everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Thursday, we're talking about rain today, maybe some thunderstorms tomorrow, and almost no chance of winter weather this weekend as that weak system continues to gust, kind of, kind of basically disappear. But let's focus on the weather we are going to have, and that's a pretty sure thing. It's rain, but this is a mess. I mean, I don't have to tell you, if you have friends, family in the middle of the country, they're seeing everything from snow, sleet, freezing rain, and it's, it's varied across a very short distance. Some folks are getting rain, a little bit of sleet, a ton of freezing rain. Some folks are getting absolutely hammered with snow, but it, it's crazy to see this extend um, basically from the deep up heart of Texas all the way to the Mexico border and all the way to the Canadian border. Um, something like 100 million people under a winter weather advisory or watch. Now for the Charlotte area, the Carolinas, we're on the warm side of this. It's not exactly super warm today, but the temperatures are way above freezing. Uh, most areas were generally in the 40s right now. And what I think is going to happen today is this first batch of rain kind of clears out of here by about the middle of the day, and it will. You could kind of see this stalled front to the south. We'll probably see a pretty big surge of warm air pushing north. Now, whether it makes it all the way to the mountains and foothills, that's the question mark. That's an area where we tend to see cold air get trapped. So I don't know if it'll make it into the 50s or 60s up there, but these 50s, 60s, and maybe 70s, will eventually stream up to the north, and I do think we're going to see that in many locations. Little, let me fill this in real quickly just to show you that warm air is lurking just to the south. Now, on top of this, there is a low-end severe weather risk today for areas just to our south down here and even a medium risk just ahead of this front. And this is what I'm really watching tomorrow because this area, there's a weak area of low pressure right there this is going to track along the front tomorrow as it gets close to us. So there's a small chance for some thunderstorms. I do not expect anything severe. So let me just tell you that right now. But I do think we're going to hear some rumbles of thunder. I think that's a pretty good chance as we go into tomorrow. So just something to keep an eye on. The day two outlook doesn't have anything. But don't be surprised if maybe the coastal sections maybe get thrown into that low end marginal risk tomorrow. Um, but let's talk about how this is going to unfold going into your weekend. So as we go into the afternoon, I do expect scattered showers, but we're probably going to see a little bit of a lull develop. And I'll show you how that kind of falls into place here this afternoon. So you can kind of see, yeah, there's some showers, especially in the mountains and foothills. Because remember, what I expect is a southerly wind to develop today. And any mountain that intersects that perpendicular, you're going to see some lift. So in the mountains, this rain could persist most of the day. And on top of the snow melt, we're going to have to watch the potential um, for some flash flooding. But as you can see, there's a lull tonight into early tomorrow, but then probably starting after midnight, we're going to see a line of storms develop to the southwest of us. Now, they're not going to be severe again, but this is the, the area of rain moving in tomorrow morning that could maybe have some rumbles of thunder in it. Um, don't be surprised if in this area we get some thunder. I would not be shocked if that happens. It pushes through fairly quickly tomorrow as we go into the afternoon, some lingering showers, but you could see the actual cold front that cold front passing through the area is going to be pretty dramatic. Temperatures uh, behind this front are going to drop pretty quickly on the backside. Probably a little bit of wintry weather in the mountains on the backside, but not very long. It pushes off to the east, takes most of Friday into early Saturday. So by the time you get up Saturday morning, though, this system is long gone. It's off the coast. It stalls, and it's so far offshore. This is what's really changed over the last couple of days, um, where this stalls, way out here instead of here. So even any low pressure system that forms along the front is going to stay pretty far to the east. The only area we'll have to watch a little bit maybe, and I don't even think this is going to happen. I think the risk is super low of maybe a little bit of brief freezing rain on Sunday. And I'll show you real quick. The, the Weather Prediction Center still has very low probabilities. Uh, this is trace amounts of freezing rain maybe along coastal sections. You could see it's, it's minuscule on Sunday morning, a uh, tenth of an inch. It's not even there. So you're talking about minuscule amounts. So the fact that, that all that is less than a tenth of an inch is probably going to say, I wouldn't worry about this at all. And there's no snow risk at all. And just to show you how things completely changed, um, you know, we had the at least some snow in the European ensembles, GFS ensembles. It's all gone. It's basically that storm is just going to be so far offshore. The GFS model, which is what a lot of people were posting online, was a huge cold and wet outlier. Um, you, you can't ignore it all the time so far into the future, but the fact that none of the other guidance was even close to that and then the GFS trended that way is kind of why this weekend is just going to be cold and dry. So the real story is going to be the rain the next 24 hours. 
And I was just looking in the mountains, you know, the snowpack there, there is snowpack. We have, it's been a couple of years since we've had decent snowpack. We basically have about what equivalent of two to four inches of water laying on the ground in the form of uh, snow. If that melts and then you get two to four inches of rain on top of it, that's four to eight inches of rain. So that's going to be a lot of runoff. I do expect some minor flash flooding. The, the, I guess the good news is we were in a drought, so we do have room for some of that water. But just heads up in the mountains, there is going to be a lot of water flowing down creeks and streams. And we could have some debris flows in spots if it gets heavy, especially as this rain moves in. If you look carefully, you see how uh, I'm going to loop this. You see the topography, what we call the escarpment. Notice how the rain anchors on there with that southerly flow. So that's the biggest risk right now in the next 24 to 36 hours. It's going to be heavy rainfall in the mountains and the foothills. And that's an area that, you know, has a ton of snow on the ground and an area we need to watch. If I re let me look real quickly. I think I do have the, uh, um, the, I have to, I think I do. I gotta say, I, I know I have this somewhere. Um, the heavy rainfall outlook that we have, you know, potentially here in the mountains, it's still in the excessive range. So let's look at that. So this is the excessive rainfall outlook. You see the medium risk and the low risk for most of the Western Carolinas. Let's go to day two. Um, we don't see it move all that much. It's probably going to be close to zero, but it, it's something to keep an eye on. I think, you know, if we look at days one and two, um, you kind of get the idea there that you're probably not going to see too much rain past tomorrow morning. But the fact that the mountains and the foothills are kind of in this low risk is something to keep an eye on over the next 24 hours. Of course, I'll keep you updated um, as we go into the weekend. Stay dry out there. Keep the umbrella handy because we've got a wet couple of days ahead before we dry out this weekend.